All right, today we are going to service this MKS XC3 pedal. And by service, I mean we're going to pull it apart, we're going to take all the bearings out, we're going to repack them, and hopefully we should get it running great. These have a reputation for being great pedals, but coming a little bit dry straight from the factory. So this one developed a creak not too long after I started riding, maybe, oh, I don't know, a thousand K in, a couple of thousand K in. So I've been riding this creaky pedal for a while now and it's easily time for it to be repacked. So you will need a small adjustable wrench or a 15 mil. A pair of tweezers might come in handy. You're gonna need a three mil hex key and a six mil one. I've got both of them on my little Blackburn switch multi-tool here. A pair of needle nose pliers, or in this case a Leatherman. A 10 mil socket. Big tub of grease, or a little tub of grease for that matter. Rags. I like having a little plastic tray to put all the bits in so I don't lose them. And some sort of detergent or degreaser. Some sort of de degreaser preferably. And coffee. All right, so first we need to take this thing apart. You're going to take your three mil and you're going to take this cage off. And this is just going to let us get in there and work a bit easier. bolts out, this should just kind of come off. A little bit stuck on this side. There we go. Next step, you're going to need your 6 mil, and we're just going to take this dust cap off. Shouldn't be on too tight. At this point, you can probably see the bearings down inside there. I can feel there's a little bit of play going on, so we need to get rid of that. So, next, it's time for the socket and the wrench. So, you're going to use your 15mm or your adjustable wrench to hold this, so that you can use the socket to take out this nut in the end is in pretty tight actually. I'm trying not to drop everything. That's what you want. Now next you'll see this little washer there. Which is specially shaped not to rotate on this spindle. So we're just going to take that out. And finally, this is the cone nut in here. This is pressing against the bearings and holding them all in place. This shouldn't be in tight. This should just be just touching the bearings, like barely holding them in place so that it can, it can allow them to spin freely. So this is where I find a pair of Needle nose pliers can come in handy just to fish that out. Yeah, it's like it's barely in there at all. That lock nut that I pulled out first is what holds everything in. This is this is only there for the bearings to run against. Suppose if you had a 15 mil socket or something, yeah, maybe 15 mil. You could probably use that to get this out. But I wouldn't recommend using that to put it back in because, like I say, you do not want it to be tight. There we go. As you can see, that's got that curved edge. That sort of race bit for the bearings to sit on. And there are the bearings in there. You can see a couple have been sort of displaced by me moving this about. I want to be very careful not to lose these. It should be 12. So I'm going to pull these out and dunk them in this degreaser. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The last one's in there, twelve. All right, so we're going to turn this over and very, very carefully fish this out. So there are another 12 bearings on this side. I mean, one of them's got some of my stuck to the spindle there. A lot of people like to keep the bearings from each side separate in case, I don't know if it's because maybe they've worn differently or something. I don't care. They're all the same as far as I'm concerned, so they're all going in together. All right, so once you're done fishing all the bearings out, there should be 24 in there. I'm just going to leave those to soak in that detergent. I'm going to try not to spill it as well. And at this point, I'm just going to clean everything. I'm going to clean this up. Um, I'm going to take all the grease and gunk off of this spindle. Pull this little washer off, this little dust seal. And that's going to get cleaned as well. So um, I'm going to go do that. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so off camera, I've uh, wiped all these down. They're all lovely and clean. I've also fished out all the be ball bearings here. Um, they're all dry, they're all ready to go. You want to be very careful picking those up with tweezers because they can, you know, ping out and fly and then they're gone. You're not going to find them. So um, a lot of people will use, you know, like a screwdriver or pliers or whatever that have slightly magnetized tips. You can sort of use the magnetized tip to pick them up. I have heard this is a bad idea though because it can um, it can magnetize the ball bearings which can in increase wear so I don't know I don't think it's a big deal but anyway before we go any further um, I need to say you do this at your own risk I don't know if this is the correct way of doing this but this is the way I know to do it and this is the way that's worked for me so um, yeah let's get at it First thing we need to do now that we've cleaned out these races is get a bit of grease in there. I've just been using this wheel bearing grease. I was told that's okay. Some people for bike stuff like to use marine grease. Um, I don't think you want to use something super heavy duty though. That's the only thing that I can say about it. This stuff seems to work just fine and it's a cool blue color. So let's go with that. Now I like to use a Q-tip to spread this in here seems to have worked the best for me. Maybe you can just do it with your finger or something else. Um, the issue is getting it into this side, which is the side that the dust cap came off. The side with the washer is pretty shallow and easy to get to, but this one not so much. Anyway, let's see how we go. The only argument I can see against using the Q-tip is that maybe you're gonna get some, some wool in there or fluff or whatever, which isn't great, but I haven't had any issues, so. All right, so as you can see there, I've just sort of splattered it around the race as best I can. Maybe that could be a bit better. Yeah, it's probably all right. So we'll just try and get into the other side now. making a bit of a mess of this one but it should be okay as long as the grease is in there and the bearings can get into it yeah the last one I did better than this but that'll do all right all right so once you've got that greased up this is the scary bit this is where we stick the ball bearings in and I like to do both sides at once um, again other people might have um, different ideas about that, but this is the way that I like to do it. So let's just try and pull our BBs in closer. I love this, this um, sort of microfiber towel stuff because it's like, it's quite heavily textured and the ball bearings kind of stay where they need to be. Okay, so we are very carefully to pick up one of these. and just slot it into the race. You 
gonna get another one. You just drop it opposite. And one in the other corner. So now we've got four in. Now I'm going to put two in each gap. Like so. One side done. Right, so they're all in. So at this point, I'm just gonna do exactly the same to the other side. Being very careful not to make any sudden movements. These should all stay in there. They shouldn't go anywhere now that they're in the grease. Um, they're pretty secure, but at the same time, I'd still try and be quite careful. Okay, so they're all on that side. Uh, kind of hard to see because I made a bit of a mess putting the grease in, but um, with a bit of luck that'll help them stay in place, I guess. You can clearly see the bearings on that side. Okay, I'm just going to leave this cloth here to catch any ball bearings, or hope to catch any ball bearings if they happen to fall out. Next, we're going to need this spindle. So, what I like to do is Put the little um, dust cap on first. Again, I don't know if this is correct. This is the way I do it. Your mileage may vary. Now, one side has like a bit of a groove in it, which uh, sits against the ball bearings. So that's gonna go on the inside towards the threads. And you'll see that there's this very faint line for the washer to sit against. Be very careful when we put the, the spindle in in a bit that you don't push too hard. Otherwise you can cause the washer to jump up over that edge, which I have done before. It's not good. Okay, that seems so pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is just put a light coat of grease, just on this. It's probably a heavy coat of grease, but never mind. Just to help with any potential corrosion or anything. And I'm also gonna put a little bit around this, um, this dust cap washer kind of thing. Again, just because that's going to be touching against the bearings and we don't want any moisture getting in there and we want the bearings to move freely, all that stuff. Again, maybe this is incorrect. Maybe you should contact Nitto about this. Not Nitto, MKS, the other Japanese bike company. All right, I'm happy with that. So we're gonna go back into the shallow side of this. The threaded side of the spindle should come out the threaded side of the pedal. So we are just extremely carefully gonna put this through the middle here until this washer sits against the bearings. And that's it, perfect. There is sticking out the other side. So now we've just got to put these bolts back on. Now while I was cleaning all this stuff, I did also clean and degrease all these bolts and the dust cap and everything. So first one is our cone nut. Got to be very careful here. I have my pinky resting on the end of the, the spindle here just to stop it dropping out because it can drop out and your bearings are not going to be your bearings anymore. They're going to be lost in the abyss. So you don't need to hold this with the, the wrench just yet. Just 
we're just going to very gently, very gently put this in until it just makes contact with the bearings. We just want it to hold them in place. We don't want it to be pinching them. We don't want to, we want them to be able to spin freely. Also try and be careful you don't stick these in too far and disturb the bearings that you've got on this side. Okay, that's just made contact there. So I'm just going to back this off a bit. Put it so it's just, just, you can feel when you turn this cone nut in, you can feel when it hits the bearings and you just, you might want to back it off and go back in a couple of times just until you get the pressure just right. Check for any play. There's no play going on that. So we're gonna grab our little washer here, which I believe you wanna put the flatter side of it down. And it can only go on the, the spindle there in one orientation. Just pop that into place. And now we're gonna get our socket and we're gonna put this lock nut back in. All right, I just, had, I just had a bit of an issue trying to get that nut back on there. It's very fiddly trying to get in there, but uh, we're good now. So I'm just gonna grab my socket. So this was in here tight. So I'm just gonna, again, use my adjustable wrench here just to hold on to that. I'm gonna snug that in. Not crazy tight, but you know, tight enough that it's not going anywhere. Now once we've got that in, I'm just gonna check that this is moving freely. And if it isn't, what you need to do, you need to pull the lock nut out again and readjust the cone nut behind it, and maybe back it off slightly, and then go back in with the lock nut. And you wanna just play with that until the pedal spins freely but there's there's no play in the spindle and no no wiggling about. So I think that's probably good to be honest. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm gonna stick the dust cover back on. When you are putting this dust cover back on with your six mil Allen key, just Just snug it up. Don't go crazy with that because I've mangled one of these before. This is just crappy, cheap plastic. And if you try to tighten this tight, this Allen key is just gonna spin and make this into a round hole. So that just needs to be snugged on just so you're not gonna get any water ingress or whatever. And now we just uh, stick the cage back on. All right, that should just snap back into place. All right, so there you have it. One MKS XC3, AKA the Bear Trap, re-greased, repacked, serviced, and hopefully good to go for another few thousand Ks. Um, like I say, I don't know if this is how MKS would do it. I don't know if this is, you know, the best way. I've seen a lot of people put a lot more grease than that in there. Like, to the point where it's like caked, like it's just, you can't see anything for grease. The entire interior, this whole mechanism is just filled with grease. I've also been told you shouldn't do that. So I don't know, this works for me. Just a quick and dirty video for today. Um, I hope someone finds that useful.